Hello everyone, my name is Imran Bashir. I'm a technical marketing engineer from Cisco Systems. And in this demonstration, we'll talk about Cisco's Rapid Threat Containment, RTC as we call it, and the integration of Cisco Identity Services Engine with Firepower Management Center 6.1. So if you look at what's been offered as a solution with this integration, uh, it gives you the ability to take an action if the endpoint is marked as suspicious by FMC. It can tell ICE to go take an action on the access layer using predefined policies. So if you look at the flow, how this works is pretty much, let's say a user or an employee logs into the network. For some reason, they intentionally or unintentionally hit a malicious file that is downloaded on their system. Now at this point, FMC will cache that and mark that endpoint as suspicious. Not only that, once that is marked as suspicious, that information will be exchanged through by FMC to ISC using PX grid. And once ICE gets that information, ICE can limit access to the endpoint or pretty much block the, uh, the endpoint from accessing the network, which is really a configuration uh, that could be done within ISC. So not only that, in terms of notification, we will mark that endpoint as suspicious, we will limit access, and we'll also put that endpoint to some kind of remediation portal, or at least a notification portal that tells or helps employee understand why the access that was working before is now not working. Okay. Once that endpoint is, is cleaned by the remediation server or by an IT resource or by an IT department, uh, ICE will then automatically put that endpoint back on the network with the right policies. So if we now if you look at the benefits, we talked about there's some information exchange from FMC to ISC. That information is exchanged using PX grid framework, which really gives you the scalability to exchange those transactions or many transactions that could happen in a second uh, in a very scalable way. Other thing we talked about is that it the whole threat defense mechanism and the ability to prevent threats from spreading is automated because as soon as ICE receives that information from FMC, it goes on the access layer and blocks the access of their endpoint from the network. And you could design the policy that it really blocks from switch to switch as well or from, or from switch to data center or by any means. And in the end, as you talked about that, uh, this uh, demonstration is focused more on the FMC, but it's, it's an architecture for a growing ecosystems. And we already have many other vendors which are onboarded. For example, uh, Stealthwatch is one other vendor that, that works with this RTC use case. Few other capabilities that are offered by this solution is things like the policy enforcement uh, could be in terms of VLAN, ACLs, or it can also be in terms of SGT, security group tags. And with 6.1, it has the ability to actually understand security group tags and get that information from ISC and ability to apply policy based on the security group tags. And we'll go over that in our demonstration as well. One other call out is that the remediation actions could be quarantine, unquarantine, or port shutdown. So with that, let's go over the demonstration. So I'm logged in into my ICE node. And the first thing I would like to show is that how would you actually connect or made, make this integration with ICE and FMC. So I'm gonna go over administration, PX grid services. And that's where I have uh, ICE connected to a Firepower Management Console. Uh, you can see there are many other topics that are part of 6.1 on FMC site. For example, the ability for ICE to give session directory, uh, adapted network control, and also the new addition is the TrustSec metadata. So ICE can actually give all the tag information to FMC. Next thing is we'll go over the policy. So if I show you the policy, it, it's a very simple policy that once the employee connects to the network, it will give them limited access, but if it's an employee versus a contractor, they will get differentiated access based on their uh, login credentials. The other thing is the exception policy. So if for some reason the employee machine gets infected, what would be the exception policy that will be given? So in this case, we will put them into a rule called quarantine, and the, uh, the permission they'll get would be a tag that says infected, and we will also send them to some kind of redirect within ISC. So the, so the user is notified that why their access is restricted uh, because they're being infected or by other reason. So with that said, let's go to the end user machine and we will log in as in George and George is an employee. 
And first of all, George logs in with a clean system. So assuming that system is not infected, I'm gonna go open a browser and access the corporate portal. We can see that George has access to company portal, also the employee portal. But if he clicks on IT portal, the access is not there because George is part of the employee group and not, not an IT group department, which is again a policy configuration that you will do in IAC. So next thing we'll do is that we'll go and click on download file and you can see that something suspicious happened. And uh, George sees a message that the video cannot be played because it's corrupted or something bad with the file. But, it, but under the cover, what really happened is that uh, the employee machine got infected with some kind of malware or some suspicious activity happened. So if we open a new tab and try to access the company portal again, we get redirected on this page. That's the notification part we talked about, that the employee will be notified that your machine has limited access because there's some suspicious activity that happened onto the machine and you can give notification. You could perhaps put links for the remediation portal uh, to go there and fix the machine. But let's see what happened on ICE. If I go back on ICE and look at my live log, uh, first of all, you can see that the, when the machine connected to the wired network, we only gave access to log into the Active Directory. But once the employee logged in uh, as George, then we gave uh, permission for the employee tag and permit access. But eventually, when the machine was marked as suspicious or something happened, uh, we got a notification from FMC and ICE instantly flipped the policy from employee, something called infected, and also uh, gave a URL for notification. So a uh, few things I would like to go over the FMC 6.1. So if you look at that in the policy side of things, first thing is the rule management. That is where you'll actually define what are the rules that will be triggered to take that action or to notify ICE to take an action. So the first rule is the IPS rule. I'm gonna click on that and it's a very simple rule. What it says is that if there's any SIC event happening in command and control, uh, the user will be marked as suspicious. And by the way, you have access to a lot more categories inside FMC that you can write policies. But for demo purposes, we've kept the policy really simple. Now, once that rule is made, how do we actually tell ICE to take an action? That is done under policy management. And if I click on the quarantine management, this is the action that will be taken by ICE, which is ANC quarantine, which will tell ICE to go and quarantine this endpoint. There's one other addition that we talked about in terms of if I go to policy and access control under FMC, we talked about that FMC can now get all the tags from ISC and you can write rules on the FMC. If I click on the my default policy, this is my web violation policy. Click on that. You can see that this rule or this policy is for employees who connect or any users who connect with a tag of SGT retail compliant. Okay. By the way, if you click on security group tag, that's where all the tags that are downloaded from ICE show up. So you can see your employee tag that we talked about, contractor, and much more. So you can pick and choose any of these tags, add to the rule, and once they're added, you can now start writing policy. For example, if the users are hitting uh, these URLs, what is the action you like to take on these URLs? You could potentially say if some, some user with that tag is accessing a hacking website or some malware, malware website, you could go and change this action to, uh, to block on the FMC side of things. Now getting back to our use case, uh, since FMC told ICE to take an action, if I look at syslog, I can clearly see that uh, that's how ICE was notified uh, to quarantine this IP address for the endpoint. Now if you go back to the endpoint and let's say we have remediated this endpoint, through a remediation portal, okay? I'm gonna go back to my corporate portal and see, can I access it? Yes, all the access work again because the endpoint is remediated. And going back to ISC, if you look at the live logs, we can see that as soon as ICE got the notification that the endpoint is remediated, we gave the access of employee back to the uh, to the machine and the, and the user has the access again. This uh, action of automatically giving the employee access back could be uh, as an automatic or it could be left on the IT side of things that if IT department would like to go investigate the machine first and then give the policy back. So that is all configurable by uh, policies that you define in IAC. Last thing I would like to point out is the TrustSec policies. So that's how our TrustSec policy would look like. In our case, we said if an employee uh, is trying to access 
uh, remediation server will give access but for some reason if the tag is infected the only access they have is the access to the remediation server and they don't have access to any of the employee resource thank you for watching this concludes the demonstration